just stand there and look at me. Okay, uh, da, 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 a couple of things, a couple of things. One, I want to give a shout out to uh, Sly Tiger for four, over, you got 400 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of people don't know that he, he lost like almost 300 subscribers when he got his channel deleted. Then had to start all over. It's like you call those people up and say, hey, sign back up again. And so he had to start all over and got the 400 subscribers. So it's like having 700 if you think about it. But anyway, that's, that's quite a uh, feat. Congratulations, buddy. Um, what I was going to point out. I, I've, uh, I did three videos this morning about that spiritual stuff. I'm still trying to get links together. And i got some other videos. And when I do that, I'll put a video up saying, go look at this uh, if you're interested. I'll point you to a, my, uh, I'm going to do a playlist. That way it doesn't go up on everybody's feed. They'll be unlisted. It's just if you want to go check it out, you'll be able to. I'll, I'll let you know. That'll be coming up here pretty quick. Um, I don't remember what started this. A while back, probably two, three months ago, I think it was still wintertime or fall, I did a video. I think it was in response to Canadian Prepper or a response to something he had said about genetic diversity. Let's say it's the SH, SHTF Beyond and you have a, a herd of cattle. You have the bull and these cows. At some point you're going to need a new bull. Otherwise he's breeding family members, close breedings and all that. And he said, you know, there, he, there was an issue about, you know, what to do about genetic diversity. And I laughed. I made some smart ass comment or whatever. But I said, let me do a video on it. Something like that. I don't remember how it was initiated, but it was something that, uh, and it was a great question that he brought up, you know, because a lot of people don't, uh, anyhow. Um, so I did a video explaining how in my herd, um, I've done it the longest in my sheep herd, I've done it very successfully in my goat herd, and I've only recently started to do it in my cattle herd, my beef herd, and that is line breeding. Okay, it's a form of inbreeding. Okay, um, basically you have the bull, you breed him to be several cows, then you take the bull, the form I'm using, they, I take the bull and breed him to the daughters out of those cows, to his first, to his first level daughters. People go, ooh, we get all that. This is not people, this is, this is beef cattle, this is, these are animals. It doesn't make them stupid or anything like that, uh, but it actually it narrows, it focuses the traits. Okay. Um, and some I've had cattle guys come out and say, Gee, why are your cows so short? Because I want them that way. That's that's the type of cattle I like. I like shorter cows because they, they top out faster than they start putting weight on. All that extra height these guys like in tall cows, you cannot eat that space between the belly and the floor. Okay, that's air. Okay, the quicker they get to the top, the quicker they put weight on. That's one of the characteristics I breed for. Um, but anyhow, I'm getting off track. I've done this for a long time with my uh, sheep. Long time with my goats, and I like to just recently did it with the cattle. Um, I have I have not to, to this point doing this now maybe like six or seven years. I have not had quote unquote a genetic defect. Now, granted, someone's genetic defect might be another guy's trait that he's looking for. So that that you know that can be debated. Like the guy said, why is your cattle so short? That's what the trait I'm going for. He might look at that and see it's a genetic, genetic defect, not his style. Okay, but they're not walking around with three heads and four legs and, I mean, uh, you know, six legs. It's, it's not that kind of thing. reason I bring this up is yesterday we had a lamb born, and she was, she was um, definitely line bred. She was the father to the daughter, and now we have this lamb. <clears throat> The genetic defect, what I believe her legs are not broken, it could have been, but I, I, she'd have acted differently if it was a broken leg. Her, her rear left leg hinges both ways instead of just forward. I can't, I should have drew it, but you know, instead of a leg going this way, it kind of goes both ways. Okay? It hinges fo forward instead of just, or backward instead of just forward. Actually, she's kind of stumbling around, this kind of thing. Everything else about the animal is fine. And I'm going to attribute this to a genetic defect, a flaw in the in the um, in that bloodline. Okay. Now what happens? Okay, I bred the father to his daughter, and I've got this offspring with a bad leg. Okay, I won't do that again. I won't breed him to her again. Nothing wrong with the mother. She could be bred to someone else. 
But the father does not work in that line. It doesn't him, her, and that. We're gonna we're gonna cancel that. We're gonna put her with somebody else. Okay. Now the um, I've done this before. I have only have in this herd right now. I only have four females that were bred line bred. Okay. My last herd, I had 24 females. Not a hitch. Um, but I got a different ram now. He's, he's a ram I've had for a while. I got rid of the old one. He was too mean. His kids were mean, too hard to work with. Moved him out. Uh, this guy's easier. But I've only had there's only four daughters available to breed him to. Um, there's one more that's due. The other ones have done fine. Um, as far as the baby with the bad leg, first day kind of stumbling around. Today it's chasing other lambs. What will happen is the muscles and the, I don't know about the tendons so much, but the muscles will compensate to right the animal. And today, you look at it standing there today, you can't notice anything's wrong. Okay. It walks, it depends on which way it's standing. But today it was running. Okay. It's, it's, a, day, it's a day and a half old. Uh, but the leg still hinges both ways. Now, an animal like this, I will not breed this animal. It's a female. More than likely, this would end up in, as, as far as in the, you know, resource, into the, go into the freezer. Um, and more likely, I won't sell this animal, so someone else doesn't have to breed it and find out. Maybe there's something else wrong there. Um, but I've been very successful with this. This is the first time I've had anything that I could point to and say, okay, that was probably, that's not going to work. So I won't breed that mother like that again. I have another ram I could put her with. But I wanted to point that out. You know, people said, gee, what would happen you know, gee, cell, you're breeding close like that. They've got to come out all messed up. Okay, this animal's fine other than the leg, and she'll get over it. Okay, she'll still be able to move around, and she's nursing fine and everything else. Nothing wrong with the mother. I can still use the father with the others. He's proven he can be used with the others, but just not that one, one connection, that father to daughter like that. Um, in my goats, it's been spectacular. I've had some genetic defects or birth defects in the past couple of years, one was a sheep. Her head was she was born with her head sideways. Right side was looking down, left side was looking up. She was that way for like seven months, and then slowly her head just came back around, and like so, she was not line bred. So like you know, she she came of this on her own, whatever the case was. Accidentally, she got knocked up. I wasn't supposed to have her bred for these reasons. She got knocked up. Has thrown the most beautiful lambs ever since. She, she she's back in the breeding group. Okay. As, you know, luck, call it whatever you want. Um, these things happen. I've not had a, uh, the, the, the lamb that a couple of videos back, I showed the stillborn, or the lamb that we lost to breach, not line bred. It was just big. It was just way big, but it was not a line bred animal, so I can't blame the line breeding on that, or vice versa. Um, but just something I wanted to share there. I had my first, um, I take that back. We've had one. I think the first calf of the year, I did the video of that, that one was line bred. Turned out great. Looks just like its mom. It favors its mother's characteristic when I wanted it to favor the father's. So now it's a healthy animal favoring the mother. Eh, I'm not too so keen on that. I may not keep her. I have another one that was born today. Uh, a, a beef cow out of, out of a, a line bred father to daughter. And the calf is beautiful. Just beautiful. That's the one I've been waiting on this one. This one, it's kind of scared me because I heard the mother mooing. Kept mooing, mooing, mooing. I was out shooting squirrels and dealing with that. And I finally, I got to go see what's going on. Then I remembered she was pregnant. And I went and she'd had the baby. And the bag was wrapped over its head. And the mother was kind of cleaning up the other side of it. But just kept mooing at the animal. I ran out and pulled the bag off his head. And it started sucking air like it was breathing. So I'm kind of, you know, it may not have made it. But just good luck of the draw, I got there at the right time. She might have figured it out, but this thing was a very thick. All the bag had been forward and around his head. It could have suffocated him. Well, we'll never know, but he's alive now. But anyways, lion bread, beautiful. Okay, I have maybe two more out there that are going to be they're lion bread. Uh, their offspring will be lion bread. We'll see how they turn out. So, so far it's been, it allows you to keep a female, intensify some of the traits you're looking for, and really there's a lot of benefit in, in, in this. The, the negative is I got this little lamb that's got the bum leg that's already more or less recovering. So it's okay, i, I got to change the way that breed situation works out. But I wanted to, to point that out as far as was there any negative, you know, this genetic defect thing with lion breeding. Yeah, something like this happens. But for me, it's been very rare. And I just wanted to point that out as far as um, I might find the link to the video I did on the 
genetic diversity, I think it was called. But um, hey, anyway, I just want to throw that out there today. I'm trying to I try to show the good and the bad and the livestock, especially if I make a mistake or something. I like to share that because people can learn from it. Um, but I think that's all I'm going to say. But um, but so far, like I said, I still line breed where I can. I did far fewer this year because we sold that last batch of sheep that were all involved in that. They were just too hungry. And um, so there was fewer to line breed. Otherwise, I would have line bred another 25, 30 of them. As I said, it's been very successful for me. All my goats, for the most part, are line bred, either father to daughter, or I will take the, uh, you've got your, your, um, your base group of females, your line one, and the father breeds the daughters out of those. Or we'll take a, um, one of his sons and breed it to your base females, and then whatever daughter's coming out of that, you breed the father to that. And so far, it's really, really been, they get the animals I'm wanting. They're starting to look the way I want them. So anyhow, you can, there's, there's some literature out there. There's some guys that still line breed. It's just not as popular as it used to be because you can just, you can cross, outcross all the time. But anyhow, it's another story. Anyhow, I love you.